For lab number three, we're going to determine the empirical formula of a copper chloride compound. So this is the copper chloride compound. Um, we don't actually know the chemical formula of it um, because copper can form more than one ion. And, and we want to determine which one is actually in this copper chloride. Um, so in this experiment, we're going to take that copper chloride, we're going to react it with aluminum, and that's going to extract the copper. And so then we can determine how much copper and how much chlorine is in our particular sample of copper chloride. Once we know that how much of each element is in there, we can convert those values to moles or even atoms and use that, those values to get the ratio of copper to chlorine, which gives us our subscripts and our chemical formula. So that's what we're going to be doing. So first, I'm going to take this copper chloride and I'm going to weigh out somewhere around a gram of copper chloride, maybe a little more. Um, I want enough to where we don't have a huge error in our measurements, um, but I don't need like 10 grams or anything. So maybe between one and two grams. Um, so to do that, I'm going to weigh it into the speaker. Um, now I'm going to put the beaker on the balance and it's already almost zeroed out, so I'm going to tear that. Um, we don't need the weight of the beaker. We're just going to weigh the copper chloride directly in that beaker where it's teared. And so then the mass that comes off the balance is just the mass of our copper chloride that we're going to react. So let's see. Like I said, I, I want at least a gram. A little over is fine. So, let's see, actually, I'm going to put a little more than that on there. Maybe. There we go. Okay, so we'll need to write down that value because we're going to need that when we're trying to determine our chemical formula um, or when we're trying to determine really the amounts of copper and chlorine that we had in our sample. So we have 1.13 grams of copper chloride uh, compound in our beaker. Okay. So that's our starting substance, the 1.13 grams. And what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to do a chemical reaction reacting the copper chloride with aluminum. And that's going to extract out the copper. But in order to react our copper chloride with aluminum, I have an aluminum wire here, if I just stick that in there, nothing's really going to happen or it will take so long that it doesn't seem like anything's happening. So to do this reaction efficiently, we're going to add some distilled water to this beaker. Okay, so we're going to get that copper chloride into solution in order to react it. Now before we do that, um, we should be taking down observations of things. So let's make sure to take a look at what this compound looks like. And so you should know what you're starting with. So we've got this powder. It's kind of a brownish color, a little bit light brown. Um, and so you should make sure to make note of what it looked like to start with. And then, like I said, I'm going to add some distilled water. We're going to dissolve it and make a copper chloride solution. Okay. Now, how much water we add doesn't really matter because it's not part of the reaction. It just helps um, the copper chloride the ions, the copper ion and the chloride ion, to move around and be able to do the reaction. So I'm just going to pour some distilled water in here. Here we go. I filled it up, you know, a little above the 20 mil line on the beaker. Um, we don't need a perfect volume measurement for that. We don't actually even need to tabulate that. And so you'll see as it's dissolving, it's turned into this kind of light blue solution. And here, I'll go ahead and use a stir rod to 
make sure we get that all dissolved in there. Okay, so let's see. Looks like there's a little bit still. To touch, stick to the bottom. Okay, so that's pretty good. So we've got, that's our copper chloride solution. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to take this aluminum wire and put it in there to react. Now, in order to get a little more surface area than just, you know, that straight wire, just like a centimeter down in that solution, I'm going to actually coil this up to allow more of it to be in there. Now, I do want to save enough to where I'll be able to grab it afterwards, so I'll kind of bend this. And so I'm going to keep kind of a handle. I'll use the stirring rod to go ahead and kind of coil this up. It doesn't have to be beautiful. We just want to be able to dip a good amount of this wire into our copper chloride solution so that it can react. And so I've got this little coil of aluminum. I'm going to kind of bend that. And then I'm going to just dip this wire down into the solution and then we're going to watch what happens. Now let me get a piece of paper under here so you can kind of better see what's going on. Okay, so we have that. And there we go. Let's see, you should be able to see it's bubbling. It looks like the wire's actually turning a little dark. And so there's definitely some sort of reaction happening. It's causing those bubbles to form. It's causing the wire to darken. So I'll set this down and let it kind of continue. Um, you see the part that's kind of out of the liquid right now, you can see there's actually, it's not darkening the wire really, you've got some coating forming on it. That's actually the copper forming on top of the wire as, as this reacts. So initially you had copper ions in solution, and now solid copper is forming on top of that wire. And as it keeps bubbling, that means it's still reacting. Shake it up a little bit here. And you see that some of that copper that's forming, you notice that now there's some at the bottom of the beaker. So when I shook it, I kind of knocked some of that off of there. And you can see it continues to bubble. And so it's still reacting. So we want to let it react as much as it can because that reaction is pulling the copper out of the solution. And actually, if you remember, you know, we added distilled water to that solid. Now that solid started out kind of that brownish tan color, um, and then the solution turned blue. Well, that blue color of the solution is because of the copper ions in solution. Okay, and so as this reacts, what you should notice is that blue color is changing. Okay, and it's gonna keep changing as this reacts. I'm gonna go ahead and shake that wire a little more, knock off that copper that's on there. Because the copper that is on that wire actually is blocking the aluminum. So it's hard for the solution to be able to keep reacting. So I'm just going to kind of knock off 
that solid because in the end that's what we want to do anyway. We want to recover the copper, um, the solid copper from this reaction. So let's take a closer look again at this. Yeah, it's still bubbling and actually if you were able to you touch this beaker and it's a little bit warm, that solution's a little bit warm and the the distilled water that I added was just at room temperature, but the reaction that's occurring is causing that solution to heat up. And what you can see if you look down in there is we actually still have quite a bit of bubbling still occurring. And so this is still reacting with that wire. So there's still a reaction between the copper ions in the solution and that aluminum in the aluminum wire. Okay, let's take a little bit of a look at this. It's still bubbling, but I'm going to go ahead and pull the wire out for a second and take a look at it. There we go. So you see the solid that's formed on that wire. That is the copper. So I'm going to use this glass stir rod and knock some more of that off to help speed up the reaction. Okay, so I've knocked off quite a bit of that. You can see it all down at the bottom, but when I put it back in there, you should still be able to see those bubbles forming. So it's still reacting. We're not done yet. So I will let it continue. Turn this so you can kind of see. But maybe you can see that the solution is definitely lightening. And so it's lighter blue than it was to start with. And that's because those copper ions are continuously being pulled out of the solution. And the lower the concentration of those copper ions, the less of them in the solution, um, the lighter that color is going to be. And eventually it should be clear, which indicates to us that we've pulled all the copper out. Still going. But like I said, that solution should go clear and it's still clearly blue. So it's not done yet. Try to knock some more of that copper off of there. Okay, so hopefully you can still see that bubbling. I'm still not there yet. Okay, it's still bubbling. Let's take another look at this wire so you can see all of that forming on there. So let's take a little closer, closer look at it. So hopefully you can see it's kind of this brick red looking color. So we're going to put it back in there, let it continue to react. We'll knock some more of that off of there. Try to expose some more of that aluminum wire. Still bubbling. And you can see there's a lot of solid down in there. All of that stuff down there. It's all our copper that we're recovering. So now it makes it kind of hard to even see where the coil or what's left of our coil is. And you should notice that that solution is still lightening, but it's still blue. We've still got some copper ions floating around in there. It's slowly reacting. Okay, let's see. It looks like actually our reaction broke our wire just detached our coil so it reacted all the way through that part that I had bent. It's okay. We'll just have to grab some tweezers to pull that out of there. You should be able to see it's still bubbling. Still got a tint of blue in there. Okay, let's look at this a little bit 
from the side. Let's see, you should be able to see still there's some bubbles still forming back there in the back. It's still reacting. It's still got a tinge of blue there. We might not have much, if anything at all, left of our aluminum wire when we're done. But it looks like our solution, it's really close to clear. So we're very close. It looks like the solution's just about completely clear. Still got a little bit of bubbles forming. So since we're almost at the end, we've got all this liquid that's kind of got on the sides with me stirring. Um, so I'm gonna squirt down the sides with distilled water so that if there's any copper remaining on the edge of the beaker, or even I'll just go ahead and wash the stir rod off so I can take that out. And then I wanna wash down the sides of the insides of the beaker. Try to wash any copper that's stuck to the inside down so that it can react. Okay, so now the solution is completely clear. It looks like we're done reacting. Let me go ahead and I'm going to use the tweezers. And I'll grab that wire and use a spatula to kind of scrape, scrape the copper off of the wire. We want to get all of that copper into the solution because I need to get rid of the aluminum wire. There's still the coil in there, so the little bit that's still reacting can react with the coil as I get this wire out. Okay, we want to get all the copper off of the wire because we want that to be part of our copper mass measurement. If I just took the wire out with the copper, then I would measure what I recovered and I'd be missing some of it. Okay, so that's what's left of our, at least the handle part of our aluminum wire. It's actually not nearly as shiny as it started. See if we can get it to focus a little on that. There we go. So you can see it's really dark, dingy looking now. It's actually kind of rough. It's not that smooth, shiny wire anymore. So I'm going to get rid of that piece. And then we've got to go in and find the other one, our coil. I'm going to get the coil out of there. Try to knock off that copper off of it. So again, we want to be able to measure how much copper is in the starting solution. So there's what's left of our coil. Probably going to end up breaking it into a few pieces as I try to scrape it. it takes a little bit of patience because this isn't easy to get the copper off of there. Like I said, I just broke a piece of it off, so I'm going to have to grab the last piece. Let me rinse that a little bit. And that looks like that is all. Let's see. Make sure I don't have any stuck to the spatula or anything. There we go. So, here's what we have left in here. Let's see if we can get a nice look at this. I 
And so that is what's left. That's got our solid copper that has been produced by the reaction by pulling those copper ions out of solution. So that's our copper we've recovered from our original sample. And then what's left, we've got that aluminum, which we can kind of pick that up so you can see. There's our aluminum. So it looks quite a bit different than what we started with. We started with that shiny aluminum wire, and that's what's left of it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to filter this solution so we can recover that copper, so that we know how much copper was in our starting um, compound. But before we do that, we're going to add a few drops of 6 molar HCl. Now, the purpose of this is that some of the aluminum um, would have dissolved into this aqueous solution, forming an aluminum salt, okay? And so that's part of the reaction. And just in case any of that aluminum salt is not dissolved in the solution, because some of it could be in the solid form kind of trapped with that copper, um, adding the HCl, Okay, adding our drops of HCl is actually going to help any undissolved aluminum to get dissolved in that solution. Okay, and so that's all that's going to do. It's not going to affect the copper at all. All it's doing is helping us to make sure that all of our aluminum, I'll use my stirring rod again, all of our aluminum is actually dissolved in our solution. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to filter that solution. So instead of decanting like we did with the separation of a mixture, we're going to actually do a filtration. And so I've got another beaker to filter into. And actually above that, what I've got is a setup with a funnel. And in that funnel, I'm going to put a piece of folded up filter paper that will capture our copper. But before I do that, since I'm going to want to know the mass of my copper that I recover from that reaction, I'm going to pre-weigh what I'm capturing the copper in. So what I'm capturing the copper in is this filter paper that I'm going to fold up and put in the funnel. Um, but I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to sit that into an evaporating dish because when I go to dry this, I'm going to have the filter paper inside that evaporating dish and I'll dry it on a hot plate. Um, and so I'm going to weigh both of these things um, without the copper. Then we will, after we have the copper in there, we'll weigh all this stuff again and we could subtract the empty weight from the weight with the copper, and that's going to tell us how much copper we have. So let's go to the balance here. We've got the balance. I need to zero this balance out. And so it's zeroed, and I'm going to put my evaporating dish, right, empty evaporating dish, and the filter paper right on top of it. And this mass we're going to need to write down. So that is the mass of the empty evaporating dish plus the filter paper. So let's see. I'm going to lift my hands off the table here. We've got 51.35 grams. So 51.35 grams. That's what we're going to need to subtract uh, from our final mass that we end up weighing. Okay, so I don't need the evaporating dish at the moment, but we're going to need to come over here to do our filtration setup. And actually, I'm going to lower the funnel down Okay, so we've got that, and I've got the filter paper. So what we're going to do with the filter paper, we're going to fold the filter paper in half first, and then we're going to fold it one more time to fold it into quarters. Okay, we're not going to do any fancy folding. We're just going to do that, and then when you look, you've got these, these two sides. You can take either side and open it up. Okay, you can't go in the middle because 
then we would just be going <laughs> right through it. Okay, we want to we want to actually filter through the paper. So this I'm going to put into my funnel. So I put the filter paper into the funnel, and I'm going to wet that um, just a little bit with water. I will wet it so that it kind of sits a little bit better because everything's in aqueous solution anyway. It doesn't matter if I add a little extra water. I just want to get this paper to sit in place a little bit better. So there we go. Now it is sitting in place and what I can do is then pour my solution, this solution that has the solid copper, into there. And so, there we go. So I'm gonna kind of swirl that around a little bit try to get that solid moving because I want it to go into the filter paper and then I will pour it in. And you can see it's draining through there. If we look a little bit at the top, you'll see that that solid, that kind of red solid, which is the copper, is getting trapped in that filter paper. And that's the whole point. Okay, we want to capture the solid copper. So, um, if you look, I've still got quite a bit of solid trapped in the beaker there. And so I need to try to get that out. And so what I'll have to do is add some water and rinse that several times. Okay, so I've got distilled water and I'm just gonna rinse moment it's all trapped down so I will just kind of spray up there with this tilted and continue to wash that copper out and it's okay if I use a lot of water we need to rinse the solid anyway because we want to rinse all the HCl through and we want to rinse any of that aluminum salt that would be in there out There we go. I got most of it. There we go. Now it looks like all that solids out of the beaker. There's our copper in the filter paper. I'm going to go ahead and rinse a little of it down. Get that copper rinsed off really well. I'm gonna try to make sure that there's not any any of those salts in the solution that are trapped into that solid copper. Okay, so it's still draining. Once that drains out, we're going to have copper in the filter paper. And then the chlorine now is in solution with the aluminum in what we have filtered off. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to dry this copper that's left in the filter paper. We're going to dry that. And then we're going to weigh it. And that's going to tell us how much of that initial mass that we used is copper, and then we can determine the copper chloride chemical formula. So I'm going to take that filter paper, now that it's done draining, take the filter paper out, and I'm going to set it into the evaporating dish. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this onto a hot plate in order to speed up the drying process. And so I've got my hot plate over here. And so that's where I'm gonna put my copper. 
I already preheated it. And so it's just gonna sit here and dry. Um, and so once that's dry, we will weigh that. And then we can determine the chemical formula. Okay, so that's our copper. And it is in the process of drying. And we'll take a little bit of a break and then come back and weigh that once it's dry. Okay, so this is where we left off was with our filtered copper, okay, and we had filtered it into, or we used that funnel, we had the filter paper in there, and we filtered the solution that contained the copper, and so below there we've got the filtrate, and so that's just a clear solution, so that's got, you know, our other product, um, and any of the HCl that we had added, and all the extra water. Um, but then I had put the filter paper into that evaporating dish that we had pre-weighed the filter paper and evaporating dish. And I put that on the hot plate and let it dry. Um, and then I've allowed it to cool to room temp. And so now what you can see here is we've got our dry copper. So see so it's this dry powder. So that is our copper. And so let's angle this a little better. Can't really see the color too well in this lighting, but there you go, that's a little better. It's kind of a brown color. Maybe got a tinge of red. Uh, and so that's our, our copper that we recovered, and we want to weigh it. Okay, so let's see. Got my balance, it is already teared, and I'm going to put this copper with the evaporating dish and filter paper on the balance. And let's see, we get 51.86 is the mass, so that mass you want to write down. Oh, it's moving around because I'm touching the table. Okay, so the 51.86 is good as long as I leave it alone. That's where we're at. 51.86 uh, for our final mass. Like I said, it fluctuates a little bit in that last decimal place. That's where our error is. But we're writing down 51.86 as our final mass for that um, evaporating dish, filter paper, and the copper. Okay. Um, so, you should have written down the mass of just the evaporating dish and filter paper. If you subtract that from this value that we just measured, that will tell you the mass of copper that was in our original copper chloride, remember, our copper chloride sample. And so we had put, you know, 1.13 grams of that copper chloride into our you know, mixture that we reacted, and now what we've recovered is we've separated out the copper, and if you do that subtraction, you know how much copper. Then you can take the starting copper chloride, subtract how much is copper, that will tell you how much is chlorine. And from those amounts, the copper and the chlorine separately, you can convert those to moles, you could even convert them to atoms if you wanted, and then the ratio of those things tells you the ratio of copper and chlorine in that substance, okay, which will give you then the empirical formula. 